So I would say that there are many instances that show when uh, policymakers or consumers do not take a life cycle perspective. Let, let me give you some examples. So um, <clears throat> it turns out when you do a life cycle uh, assessment of an automobile, um, that you look at both what we call the embodied impacts of producing that vehicle um, compared to the operational phase or the use phase and then end of life. The, the biggest impact by far is that use phase, okay? <clears throat> uh, and so we want to be able to do whatever we can to lower the emissions associated with that use phase because it has the most Im impact from a, a carbon standpoint. Now, um, there's legislation that was implemented many years ago in Europe um, that was meant to, it was called the End of Life Vehicle Directive, and it was intended to increase the amount of a vehicle that can be recycled. Um, and that's admirable. They're trying to reduce impacts associated with uh, end of life. Um, but the challenge is that the way you do that is by changing the materials that are used in a vehicle. Um, and, uh, you know, conventionally, most of the body is made out of, of steel, um, and uh, which is very easy to recycle, uh, uh, and that's what's done in, for a lot of vehicles. Um, but, you know, people have proposed other lightweight versions. You can make lighter weight versions out of steel, lighter weight versions out of aluminum, out of composites. All of those are targeted at reducing the fuel consumption and reducing those impacts throughout the vehicle's uh, life cycle. But some of those alternative materials make it less easy to recycle it at end of life using current technologies. So that's a trade-off that wasn't explicitly considered, and there are many examples showing where it had detrimental um, effects when it comes to, uh, to CO2 emissions. Um, uh, there are other examples of, <clears throat> um, for example, uh, um, when we do life cycle assessments, sometimes the things that we like to consider are what are the hot spots and what are the hot buttons. Now, a hot spot when you do an analysis is showing these are the factors that are really contributing most to the environmental impact. Um, and those are things that you should prioritize to reduce. Um, there are also things associated <clears throat> where people perceive them to be the key drivers of environmental impact, um, but when you do the life cycle assessment, they're not particularly significant. Um, and probably the most common example of this is waste at end of life. Um, people assume that when you throw things away, it has a high environmental impact. Um, and the reality is that in most cases, that's not true. So while it's, it's definitely not ideal that we should be throwing things into landfills, um, and those do take up space, and those are materials we can't recycle, there's not like a high environmental footprint associated with it. So there, there are definitely trade-offs. But people assume that throwing it away will have the highest environmental impact. Um, and that's often not the case. It's usually something associated with materials or the use phase. Um, th there's an example that we use um, with students about uh, a study that was done on shampoo, looking at the full life cycle of it. What are all the materials that go into the packaging, that go into the product itself, the use of it, and then disposal at end of life. And we ask you know, students, what do you think is going to be um, the biggest environmental impact associated with the life cycle of this shampoo? And they mention things that, are, that they interact with, right? Oh, it's probably that packaging, or it's probably disposal at end of life. The number one environmental impact by far of shampoo is the use phase in the shower. Like all the hot water that's used associated with that <clears throat> um, shampoo is the biggest environmental impact. Um, and that's a surprise to people, but I think it's because we're, we're not used to carbon accounting, to be able to compare you know, how much environmental impact goes into heating water compared to molding plastic and transporting it. Um, and so that's an important reason why we do this life cycle assessment to kind of do that carbon literacy, right? We've been doing financial accounting for hundreds of years, We've only been doing carbon accounting for a few decades. Uh, and so part of what we're doing in this life cycle assessment is trying to educate people. What are those key drivers? How do you prioritize things? How do you figure out what the hot spots are uh, instead of those hot buttons?